This has been a great uh, week for the kids. I'm in this series. I, I actually began last week be called, uh, called The Great Unveiling, where Christ kind of unveils himself to us. And today I want to talk about when Jesus said, in, or when the Father said in the Old Testament, Behold my servant. John 3.16, that great, say, great verse says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We did have two that came to know the Lord this week. I got to share with the older group uh, on Wednesday night. Jody got to share with the younger group. Um, I'm very, um, I, I was very much in prayer about it. I, I wanted to make sure that if anybody spoke to the kids on Wednesday night that it was the Lord. And um, one young girl that I've been praying for personally, my granddaughter, came to know the Lord on Wednesday night. Yeah, you can clap for that if you want to. Yeah. I, I don't want kids to not understand. I, I, I don't want them, uh, and, and actually, when I shared the word, we always go behind them to talk to the kids just to make sure they knew what they were doing. And some who raised a hand it wasn't what they needed to do after we talked with him and we kind of understood. But I didn't want to talk to my granddaughter because I wanted my granddaughter, you know, I was afraid she pleased Pops, you know, and she didn't want to disappoint Pops. So uh, someone else talked to her just so we could understand if she really knew what she was talking about. But that night when um, she, uh, we were doing night kisses, y'all know what that is? That's a good time at our house. When, you, when you're going to go to bed, you come and you give kisses and we say good night and all that kind of stuff. And, and Evangeline came running and she hugged me around the legs. And uh, I, I leaned down and I kissed her on the top of the head and I told her I loved her. And then she said these words, thank you for telling me about Jesus. Amen. Amen. That kind of just sealed it for me. I was good from that moment on. You know, if the Lord had come, I would have said, uh, even so come Lord Jesus. It was the unveiling of the Lord to her heart at the right point, at the right time, in, in, in God's way. Because I can talk Jesus all day long. Y'all heard me do it, right? But unless the Holy Spirit comes, unless the Holy Spirit comes, and what the, the Holy Spirit's going to always say is, Behold, my son. In Isaiah chapter, we're actually going to begin in chapter 42, and then we're going to get to chapter 52, but the very first verse in 42, and by the way, both of these scriptures are leading up to the chapter that we're headed towards, which is chapter 53. In chapter 42, verse 1, it says this, Behold my servant whom I uphold. I hold him up. When, when God the Father is saying to us, look to Jesus. He's the one that I'm lifting up for you. Jesus said to us that if he be lifted up, he would draw all people unto himself. The most important thing that the Father wants to do is let us see Jesus. So what he is saying is, take a good look at him. Ponder. Think on these things. This is, and here's his description, my servant. He says, my elect one. It really means my chosen one in whom my soul delights. This is the delight of God the Father, Jesus Christ. What He did, why He did it, how He did it. Listen to me now. For whom He did it. It pleased the Lord. In Matthew 3, verse 17 after Jesus was getting to that place where he was beginning his ministry, he went to John the Baptist down at the Jordan River, and he was baptized. John wanted to fight with him about it, but he said, no, no, let it be so. And Jesus was baptized, and when he came up out of the water, the Spirit came upon him like a dove, and heaven spoke and said these words, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. He says here, he said, my chosen one in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit 
upon him. When God sent Jesus to this earth, he didn't send him by himself. He sent him with the power and the presence as a human being, the Son of God who became the Son of Man. He gave him the presence of heaven to lead him and to guide him. And by the way, if we would so allow, if we would so believe, if we would so let God do for us, He would do for us the same thing He did for Jesus. And He would anoint us with that same precious Spirit. He said, if I put my Spirit upon Him, and He will bring forth justice to the Gentiles. Now, in Isaiah, He's talking about the Jewish people. But God just wanted to remind them that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and those who dwell therein. i got a bigger word than just the Jewish people. They're my chosen people. They're to be a witness to the world. But listen, I'm grateful that he had a word for us Gentiles too. And Jesus came to be the fulfillment, the Messiah, the chosen one. But it could not be contained in that group. He, for God so loved the world, he let it go for everyone. And then it says, he will cry out, verse 2, it says, excuse me, he will not cry out. It, is, it means he won't shout. He's not going to force it upon us. He will not raise his voice, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. He just basically came, I hope you hear this, almost covered. Covered. He appeared normal, and the Spirit of God is, would take that life and highlight it and lift it up. It was almost as if he was veiled. He said in verse 3, a bruised reed he will not break, smoking flax he will not quench. He will bring forth justice for truth. You know, I, I'll be honest with you. I, that verse, I've, I've, I've read it my whole life. And, and it's most often quoted in Matthew in Matthew chapter 12, uh, Jesus had healed a, a person with a withered hand on the Sabbath day. All he did was speak the word, and the man took forth, and his, his hand came back whole. And, and people got mad at him for that. And he said, he said to them, uh, why would you be mad about that? If you had a sheep that fell into a ditch, you would reach down and, and pick it up and get it out of the ditch. And how much more valuable is someone like this? But that they, they got mad at him, so he left them. And then it says, and this is Matthew 12, 15. Just let me read it to you. He said, but when Jesus knew it, he withdrew from there. Great multitudes followed him, and he healed, and he healed them all. Yet he warned them not to make him known. Has it ever bothered you that Jesus told people not to tell people? Because what would have, need to happen is it would need to happen in their own heart. That unveiling of the Spirit in their heart. Don't do it just because he, he healed a withered man's hand or he, he, he gave the lame the ability to walk or the leprosy, he gave them purity again. Don't do it for those reasons. Don't do it simply because of a healing. Do it because of the truth in your heart. As God says, behold my servant, this is the one you need to chase. He said, behold my, this is what he said. He, he warned them not to make him known that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet saying, behold my servant whom I have not chosen, my beloved in whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him. He will declare justice to the Gentiles. He will not quarrel nor cry out, nor will anyone hear his voice in the streets. Here's the phrase again. You ready for it? A bruised reed he will not break. Smoking flax he will not quench till he sends forth justice to victory. And in his name, Gentiles will trust. A bruised reed. Literally, a reed that has been crushed. And he will not break it off. He will not break it. A, a candle where the wick is just flickering. He will not put his fingers in and snuff it out. Do you hear me? I don't care what life brings you. You may be bruised. You may be broken. You may be beat up. You may be hurt. 
But please hear this. God will still be there to restore. He will not take away. Are you listening? You think your life may be coming to an end. Your purpose, your, your, your hope. It may be just a flickering light. But he's not going to say, no, 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 I'm just going to snuff you out. The best way to come to Christ is as you are. If you're broken, come as you are. If you feel like you don't have much to give, come as you are. You don't have to bring all the, the, the applause of, the, of, of this world. Just bring yourself. And He'll accept you. And He'll take you. By the way, Jesus came just as He was. Look in Isaiah 52. This is really the, the, the beginning of chapter 53. When the, when the Hebrew put it there, they didn't put the chapters in there. They, they, they just uh, wrote it out, and the people who translate it put the chapters in. So if you look back in chapter 52, verse 13, you'll hear these words, Behold, my servant. When my servant comes, he will deal prudently. It means my servant will prosper. It may not look like he's prospering, but he will. He shall be exalted. Jesus will be exalted. He will be extolled. He will be lifted up and be very high. Now the people, not from the testimony of others, but their own testimony with their own heart that hears, with their own eyes that see, with their own Mind that believes by faith they saw it and they were changed by it. It can happen to a nine-year-old girl. It can happen to an 80-year-old. It can happen after you file bankruptcy. It can be happen, it can happen any point in time when your child commits suicide. And you think there's nothing to live for. There's no hope at all. He can come at that point and He can reveal Himself. And you may have heard about God, but you needed to see much more. And when He reveals Himself, it may not be as you thought it would be, but it would be in truth. So this is how He revealed Himself. Verse 14 says, just as many were astonished at you. When they saw him, they were amazed. And then that passage that means so much to me, his visage was marred more than any man. He was disfigured. Can we look at the cross? They took him. And in the Garden of Eden, they slapped him. And the soldiers began to brutally treat him. Now, if I went back there, Jose, can I pick on you? If I came back there and slapped you, I mean, I just walled off and hit you as hard as I could. What would be the thing that would come from your heart other than saying, God, forgive him for he knows not what he's doing? I mean, it, it'd be on, Right? He would lay hands on the pastor, right? But Jesus never said a word. He didn't make it about him. He made it about us. And they began the process of beating him. And none of us knows for how long. Then they whipped him. They beat him with cane. They caned him. They scourged him. His back would bleed as the skin would be pulled off. He would swell. His face would be swollen. There would be cuts, bruising. They put a crown of thorns on his head. When it says his visage, his appearance was so marred, 
It's literally to the place when his mom looked on him on the cross and would not, could not even recognize her own son. Pastor, that sounds difficult. Of course it was difficult. It was love. Love for you. You know, we say these things. He was crucified. They put nails in his hands. They put nails in his feet. Naked he hung on the cross. We say these things and we say them so often that we forget how terrible, how hard, how heavy this was for him. And when they nailed those nails through his hands and he looked at the ones that were doing it, he looked at them with love. The centurion who was there at the cross, who, who saw all of these things happen, and the way that he so reacted, he didn't react in anger. He said, Father, forgive them. He said, the Roman soldier said, surely this is the Son of God. This is what Isaiah is talking about. When they came, nobody else had to tell that soldier. But when he saw it for himself, and he knew it in his heart, God revealed Himself to that centurion. It's as if He said to him, Behold my servant. Not with the regal robes of glory. He laid those things down because that wasn't as valuable for him to hold on to. Philippians 2 tells us. What he wanted to grasp was you. He wanted to hold to you. He wanted to comfort you. He wanted his riches to become your riches. It says here his visage, his, he, he was so disfigured more than any man. His form more than the sons of men. Verse 15 so shall He sprinkle many nations. That's a unique word, sprinkle. It's the same word that in the atonement when they would take the, the, the hyssop and dip it into the, uh, into the blood and sprinkle it. The sacrifice. What can wash away my sins? Church? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Oh, church, the treasures of heaven are not the streets of gold, the walls of jasper, not the jewels, not the brightness of the glory. Oh, <laughs> the treasures of heaven that hold the glory of God in that place is the sacrifice of Jesus for you. Do you see him? Do you feel his love? When my granddaughter came running up to me and she hugged me around the, the, the legs because that's how tall she is. And I reached down to her and she kissed me on the cheek. By the way, she kissed me on this cheek. Then she kissed me on this cheek. Then she kissed me on my forehead. Then she kissed me on my bald spot. And when she was sharing at that moment, with the cleansing that the Lord had brought her and the wholeness that God had put into her heart and into her life. What she knew was that the love of God had come to her. What she knew was that God spoke to her. God saved her never to be the same again. When her dad was seven years old, my oldest son, we were talking in the church and I, he, he was asking me questions and I was giving him answers and he talked about salvation and, and, and I I led him in a sinner's prayer. And I began to ask him, you know, was he sure? Did he know? And he, I said, how do you feel? And he said, 
Daddy, my heart's beeping. The beeping of my heart. Y'all know what I'm talking about? The Lord did that. It wasn't Dad. It was the Lord who can make things right. In this world, is it broken? Is it, is it chasing after things that have no value? It, is, it, is it obsessed with, with the, the, the vanity of life? And yet, the heart of the Father grieves for those who are moving away from Him. And He will not break off that bruised reed. He will not snuff out that wick of the flame. What He will do is He will speak in such a way that life can come to them. Listen to the last part of verse 15. Kings shall shut their mouth at Him. <laughs> Kings always have something to say. They're in charge, they think. But at that point in time, they'll just say, y'all ready for this? This is a big biblical word. Wow. Wow. You know, it'd take a whole lot to get me to sh shut up. Can I get an amen? But in the glory of God, the amazement of it. I've always said, as soon as I get to heaven and I'm in there in the presence of God, the word that's going to come is, wow. What we have down here is just a foretaste of glory divine. It says, kings shall shut their mouth at him. For what had not been told them, they shall see. And what they had not heard, here's the word now, they shall consider. A verse, our Lord just gave me a verse. I want to make sure I say it correctly. This is Isaiah, the same book, the first chapter, the 18th verse. Come now and let us reason together. Isaiah 1.18 Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are as scarlet, they shall be made as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Can we consider can we reason together you came to church today to praise the lord to worship the lord we've sung his praise then my job is to come and highlight the word of god thus saith the lord what the lord will be saying to you today is behold my servant in whom i'm well pleased if you choose Jesus, if you see Him afresh and anew, if you hear the Spirit speak to your heart, heaven can change. Christians, are you praying for the lost? Are you walking by them? Are you loving them? Are you having a conversation? The Lord may be trying to get their attention and He may bring you along the path. Those of you here, who are here today who maybe your heart is pricked. Maybe there's something that you know. You know, when I do go to heaven, I want my Father to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Not perfect in me, just perfect in Him. That's what I want to hear. Is that what you want to hear when you breathe your last breath? Do you want to go and tell him how great you live for him down here on earth? Or you want to say to him, thank you for your salvation through Jesus Christ. Thank you for the blood that cleansed me. I'm not here because I deserve it. I'm here because of your love. Which one do you want to hold to?